fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Pedro Jimenez was a notorious outlaw leader who, with his outlaw gang, had defied the law time after time with great success. Pedro was a large man, ruthless and clever, and he never lost the opportunity to boast about himself to his intended victims, a fact which had caused him to become known as the boastful bandit. For instance, there was the time when he and his gang held up the cafe in Huntsville. Those shots, amigos, are for the warning. You'll all line up along the bar with your hands up. No? Hey, it's a holdup. Must be Jimenez and his gang. But of course it is Pedro Jimenez and his gang. You are too noisy, my friends. I cannot hear myself to think. That is better. Hank, Wally, take the men and gather the wallets while I tell these hombres about Pedro Jimenez. Sure, Pedro. Come on, boys. Let's get busy. All right, come on. At last, all of you have the great pleasure of seeing me, the great Pedro Jimenez. I am strong and clever, amigos. Much too clever for the law. <laughs> oh, there's none that can shoot the gun more better or ride more better than Pedro Jimenez. Look, am I not the hombre who is well worth your attention? We got all that money, Pedro. Let's get out of here pronto. But I've not finished my talk, Hank. I've not told them how we've robbed the bank in Pecos of $20,000. <laughs> oh, it is good to get the money so easy, no? Oh, you got our money. Stop boasting and get out of here, will you? Sure. You'll make the fun at Pedro, eh? No, oh, my shoulder! You oh. see, I do not like such interruptions. Come on, Pedro, let's go. All right. Perhaps it is better to leave now. Do not forget the great Pedro Jimenez, amigos. Adios! And again there was the time when Pedro and a few of his men walked calmly into the bank in Red Rock. What can I do for you, mister? I have come to draw out a large sum of money, senor. Oh, well, just write out an order on your account and I'll be glad to take care of it, sir. Oh, that is too bothersome, senor. I need much of your money. My name is Pedro Jimenez. Jimenez, I see. 
I suppose you have an account here, sir, but you will have to write the order. Pedro Jimenez does not write the orders, senor. He gives them. If you have not heard the name, you then must be quite stupid. What? Hank, call up the bag you brought. Sure. Say, what is this? There's others waiting, sir. But of course. And they won't get impatient as long as the hombres who have come in with me give them attention. Say, those men back there are holding guns on everyone. You see? <laughs> oh, too bad such a means of getting money from your bank is necessary. You will remember the name of Pedro Jimenez next time you hear it, senor. Push out the money into the bag here. Hey, hold up. You, you're Jimenez the outlaw. <laughs> but of course. Who else, amigo? Now, let us complete this business. Prano. Uh, uh, of course. There. There's the money. Scoop it into the bag, Hank. With pleasure. Yeah, yeah that's got all of it, Pedro. Oh, bueno, bueno. <laughs> Adios, senor. Perhaps another time I shall come in again to withdraw some of your funds, no? <laughs> oh, Pedro Jimenez is not the one to cause trouble. It is more of the pleasure to do business in the quiet way, eh, senor? Let's get going. Come on, Pedro. So, you see, senor, always my friends are most impatient to leave. Another time I shall tell you more about Pedro Jimenez. Adios, senor. It was Jimenez and his gang. Get the sheriff. We've been robbed. Don't let them get away. And so the swashbuckling, boastful Jimenez and his men moved through the Southwest Territory, leading people amazed, confused, and much poorer than when they met the boastful bandit. It was about a week after the Red Rock Bank robbery when the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode the trail south of that town on their way to visit the Padre at the mission. It's been some time since we visited the Padre, Tonto. I'm looking forward to seeing him again. Ah, it'd be good to see Padre. Yes, he usually has interesting news to tell us. Isn't that right? We like to hear... Wait, I hear shots, Tonto. They seem to come from beyond the bend in the trail. Ah, me hear them too. Let's hurry and find out what's going on. Come on, Silver. Racing forward at a gallop, the two men rounded the bend in the trail in time to see a small group of horsemen gathered around a stagecoach, which was stopped a short distance up the trail. Looks like a hold-up tunnel. Ah, horsemen have drawn guns. Use your guns. Them leaving fast. Yes, but they're scattering. Each is riding in a different direction. There are four of them. That right. I'll follow the one who's going off to the right. Get after one of the others. Uh -huh. The masked man and Indian separated. The man who had ridden off to the right moved at a furious pace. But the lone ranger urged the great horse Silver to even greater speed as he pursued the fleeing outlaw. Faster, big fellow, faster. Monsilver! For a moment, the outlaw didn't seem to know he was being followed. Then, turning in the saddle, he saw the masked man racing along behind him. He raised his gun and fired. <laughs> horse spoiled his aim and the bullets went wild as the lone ranger having holstered his own guns continued to follow the great white stallion seemed to be steadily increasing his speed and gradually but surely moved closer and closer to the fleeing man again bullets whined close but still the lone ranger pressed onward until he could see the panic-stricken look on the face of the outlaw who seemed unable to take his eyes off the masked figure moving up behind him Finally, the Lone Ranger took his lariat in his hand and whirling it above his head, suddenly sent the snake-like rope forward. As the loop whipped down over the shoulders of the outlaw, the Great Silver instinctively slid to a halt and with a surprised yell, the outlaw was pulled from his saddle by the top lariat. Steady, Silver. Oh, easy, steady now. Uh, oh, I'm hurt. I landed on my shoulder. Stop whining. Get up. What are you going to do? Tie you on your horse and turn you over to the sheriff in Red Rock. Well, what is this, a joke? Yo, mass, that means... It means you're still going to the sheriff in Red Rock. Oh, sure, hope I land. Others get breaking, must have been. Well, at least we have this one. Get on your horse, you. Yeah, yeah, sure. Don't use that gun. Get going to your horse. Go on, mount. Uh, me hold, boys. Look, mister, maybe we can make a deal. I got some of the money from the stage in my saddlebag. I'll divvy with you if you let that me... That money will be evidence against you. I said we're taking you to Red Rock. You'll be sorry when Pedro Jimenez hears about this. Oh, so it was part of the Jimenez gang that pulled that hold up, huh? That's an added reason why we'll turn you over to the sheriff. 
Here, Silver. Come, Scout. All right. Start back to the trail and head for Red Rock. Easy, Silver. Big fella. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. Get up there. Get up, Scout. Silver. Upon reaching the edge of the town of Red Rock, the Lone Ranger called a halt. Then, after writing a note to the sheriff, he gave it to Tonto, who went into town taking the outlaw. It was after dusk when Tonto returned to the place where the Lone Ranger was waiting, bringing the sheriff with him. Hi, Tonto. Good evening, Sheriff. Well, Sunday Indian, you told me the truth, all right. With the mask and that white stallion and the fancy guns and all, this must be the Lone Ranger, like you said. Uh, him, Lone Ranger. Well, I got your note along with a silver bullet the Indian brought, but I, I was still a bit skeptical about really meeting the Lone Ranger himself. I am certainly glad to meet you, mister. Well, thanks, Sheriff. Is that outlaw behind bars? Yes, he sure is. And I wish we could get our hands on the rest of the Jimenez gang. They've bedeviled us enough around Red Rock. There's nothing we can do that'll make that prisoner talk, though. I'm sure of that. I have a plan that may help find the hideout of the gang. Well, if you have any such plan, I'd sure like to hear it. I suggest you fix it so that the outlaw in jail can escape. Let him escape? Yes. You mean to say after you went to all the trouble of bringing him in, you Oh, wait a minute, and I'll explain. All right, I'm listening. If we're arranged so that he thought he managed to escape of his own accord, we could be ready to follow him to the hideout. Gee, that's a good idea, but how can I fix it so as he gets out without realizing his escape was planned? Well, I've thought of a way. When it's time to send in the prisoners' breakfast, I suggest hey, that you leave... What's that? Something happened back in town. Uh-oh. Maybe the gang has come to get the prisoner. I'd better get there pronto. Now, we'll go with you. Easy, easy, easy come on. Easy, come on. Come Riding from the edge of town at a gallop, the three men moved through the dusk up the back way behind the buildings instead of going through the main street. As they drew closer, they realized the excitement was coming from the cafe and not from the jail. Hey, something's going on at the cafe. We'll pull rain at the back door. Here it is. Oh, 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 oh. I'll slam open the back door. You'd better stay back in the shadows near the door since you have on that mask. If I need help, you can be ready, eh? All right, Sheriff. All right, stop, stop, Nash. All right, now, speak up. What's the meaning of this? Well, there's a stranger in here somewhere who started it, Sheriff. Well, he went loco, I reckon. Did too much celebrating, I'd say. Yeah. Right, Sheriff. He was sitting at a corner table. And he just jumped up quick-like, pulled his gun, and started shooting at the bottles on the shelf behind the bar. Well, then everybody got into the brawl, it seems like. Where is that stranger you mentioned? Point him out. Well, let's see. He, uh... Oh, now, that's funny. I don't see him in here now. Yes, he must have beat it during the excitement. Yeah, we was all too busy to know it. Yes. Well, the trouble with you, Waddies, is that you take every chance to start a brawl without reason. Now, if you don't want me to jail all you, take up a collection to pay for the damage it is. As for the stranger who started this, if I could get my hands on it... Sheriff! Eh? Sheriff! I ran to the jail a few minutes ago to see if you were around. Yeah. You better get there quick. Well, what happened? The deputy you left in charge is wounded and out cold, and the cells are all empty. I looked to make sure. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Why, well, there was only one prisoner, one of the Jimenez gang. Say, that stranger you mentioned must have started this brawl as a cover-up for a jailbreak. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, standing unnoticed in the shadows near the back door of the cafe, heard the news that was brought to the sheriff. Pedro Jimenez pulled a fast trick and ruined our plan, Tonto. That's right. We'll go to the back door of the jail. You can let the sheriff know I'm waiting out back after we get there. All right, let's go. Uh After the wounded deputy had been taken care of, the sheriff joined the Lone Ranger and Tonto outside the back door of the jail. Well, Sheriff, did you find out anything from the wounded deputy? Yep, yep. He said he heard the racket at the cafe, but knew I was around town somewhere and didn't want to leave the jail unguarded. Well, see, about that time, a tall woman wearing a sunbonnet and a shawl came into the jail. A woman, huh? Uh Uh-huh. The deputy says he got up polite-like and said, uh, What can I do for you, madam? Right then, she whipped out a gun and let him have it. That's all he remembers. The lamplight wasn't any too bright, so he didn't get a close look at her face. Oh, that's bad. I asked all around, but nobody saw a woman and a man riding away. I don't think the prisoner rode away with a woman at all. But the deputy swore it was a woman I who... I think he may have pulled another trick, Sheriff. I think it was one of his men dressed as a woman. A great day. Yes, he could have worn the dress along with the shawl over his regular clothes. The sunbonnet would disguise his head and features. Yes. Yeah. Take only a minute to get them off and roll them into a bundle. Well, Sunday, I bet that's the way it was. With the excitement going on at the cafe and it being dark out, nobody had noticed a couple of hombres riding through town. That's right. And they couldn't have come out the back way. We came along there and we would have seen them. Yep, yep. Well, the only thing I can do now is wait till dawn, and then I'll get a posse together and make a search for the gang. Well, the moon's coming up. Yep. When it's bright enough, Tonto and I'll do some looking around. Maybe we can find something before you're ready to ride with the posse. Easy, Steady. Easy, Scout. Adios. 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 I'll uh, see you in the morning, then. Good enough. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Meantime, in a back room of the Red Rock Hotel, just a short distance down the street and catty corner from the jail, four men lounged about listening as Pedro Jimenez talked in a low voice. <laughs> So, am I not the clever one, amigos? We have come one by one to this room which Hank keeps here at the hotel. You sure figured out a good plan, all right, Pedro. Yeah, right, right. Sure of course. <laughs> then, while Hank make the disturbance at the cafe, me, Pedro, dressed like a woman, went out the back door of this hotel, walked to the jail, and got Wally free. <laughs> <laughs> the look on the deputy's face was most comical when I pulled the gun and <laughs> shot him. It was plenty risky, but it worked. <laughs> yeah, they'll be scouring the countryside looking for our hideout while we're right here under their noses. <laughs> <laughs> See, Senator Hank, that is right. And after the sheriff takes a posse out for the search... Then we shall rob the bank for the second time and leave this territory. That's a good thing. The sheriff will go loco when he gets back with the posse and finds out what's happening. (laughs) Now all we have to do is wait until we know the posse has gone. It will wait until daylight, I'm sure. We shall get our horses from the grove behind the hotel and ride to the bank in the morning. Moonlight was bright enough, the Lone Ranger and Tonto searched the various trails leading from town for evidence of fresh tracks of galloping horses. They were unable to find what they were looking for, so they returned to the edge of town and pulled rein. The outlaw and the prisoner he freed may have gone on foot to a place behind one of the buildings in town where they'd left their horses. We could find the trail they left as they started away from town. It would be easy to follow them. That's right. So easy, big fella. We we'll leave Silver and Scout here, Tonto. Ah. Uh, what we do now, Kimasari? We'll walk along behind the buildings, look for some trace of their horses' hoof marks. We won't attract attention on foot. Let's go. Moving in the shadows, the masked man and the Indian walked behind the buildings on one side of the main street, then crossed over and searched behind the buildings on the other side. It took a great deal of time as they carefully scrutinized the ground. It was an hour later when they reached the space behind the hotel. Suddenly, the Lone Ranger stooped and picked up something. Then he called to Tonto, who was a few paces away. Tonto, look here. What you find, Kimasabi? Yes, a woman's sunbonnet. The outlaw must have dropped it. Ah, it's right near back door of hotel. And look, Kimasabi, we see footprints of two men. I see a good many footprints, Tonto, so we can't... Wait, wait, look close. 
These show two men running to hotel back door. Good that you can read signs so well, Toto. That explains why no one saw them leaving town. They ran across the street and came here to the back door of the hotel. You think them hide out in hotel? That seems to be the answer. It's a clever move on their part. Sheriff takes it for granted they'd head away from town. Not right. Toto, go get the sheriff. Have him bring a few of his men here. Meantime, I'll go inside and try to locate the room they're in. All right, hurry. Here go. The sheriff was just getting ready to leave his office at the jail when Tonto hurriedly entered. Well, Tonto, I was just about to leave. The posse is arranged for and the dawn will ride. No. You get men. Come quick. The back door hotel. What's going on at the hotel? Mask friends say you come. Maybe catch outlaws. Uh, holy smoke. You mean they might be right there under our noses? Ah, you get men. Come quick. All right, I'll do it right away. Be with you pronto. After Tonto left to get the sheriff, the Lone Ranger cautiously entered the back door of the hotel. He decided that the men must have a room near the back so they wouldn't have to pass through the lobby. With that thought in mind, he listened at each door in the back corridor. In spite of caution, the rough bare flooring creaked beneath the masked man's boots as he left one door and moved to another. Light shone from the crack under the door he approached. Then he stopped listening as the murmur of voices came to his ears. For a moment, the Lone Ranger stood motionless. Then he bent one knee and knelt to peer through the keyhole. Meantime, inside the room, Pedro, who was talking, suddenly interrupted his words and signaled for silence. It will be... Wait, I hear a slight noise. I shall open the door and hold my gun ready. Caramba, a masked man listening. As Pedro swung the door open, the Lone Ranger moved like lightning, knocking Pedro's gun arm with his left hand and landing a blow to the chin with his right. As Pedro went down, his gun flew from his hand, and the force of the effort carried the Lone Ranger into the room where the others were already grabbing for their guns. Hold it! But instantly, the masked man's guns appeared in his hands. Then he heard a voice behind him say, Reach, mister. I was wise enough to stand alongside the door. Hey... He's the one who took me to jail. Fill him with lead. No, wait. The Lone Ranger stood, realizing he was cornered for the moment. Then he slowly raised his hands as Pedro got to his feet, rubbing his chin, and picking up his gun, walked from the doorway to where the Lone Ranger stood and faced the masked man. So, there's a gun at your back, senior masked man, and also the rest of us holding guns. Drop yours to the floor, pronto. Very well. Good. Now, Wally, you continue to keep him covered from behind. But you others, put away your guns and come here. Right. What are you going to do, Pedro? You're to plug him right now. Yeah, remember, he socked you, Pedro. He caught Wally this afternoon. I cannot forget the sock, amigo. The joy is most painful. But I shall return this blow he has given to Pedro Jomez with much interest. Each of you take one of his arms and hold him securely. They'll do that at their risk. The risk is yours, my impetuous friend. If you resist, a bullet will find its way into your back. Hold him, senor. Sure. I got one arm. I have many questions. We got him, Pedro. The two outlaws held the Lone Ranger's arms behind his back, making sure not to get in the way of Wally's gun. Pinioned and seemingly helpless, the masked man stood facing the sneering Pedro. Well, what now, Jimenez? I have noticed you know me, senor, but I have not the pleasure of knowing you. First, I shall holster my gun, so. Now, amigo, before inquiring the reason for your spying, I shall remove your mask and then see how many blows your chin can take. As Pedro paused to watch the effect of his words on the masked man before him, the Lone Ranger thought quickly. He knew that he could expect a bullet from Wally's gun if he resisted. Yet, come what may, he had no intention of taking Pedro's blows or letting the outlaw remove the mask. Then came the chance he almost dared not hope for when he heard Toto's voice from the doorway. You drop gun, quick, let them... You... Instantly, before Pedro could oh, act, this is it. the Lone Ranger kicked heavily back with one foot, catching one of the outlaws on the shin. And a split second later, the masked man swung slightly sideward, bending forward at the same time, so that the other outlaw flew over his shoulder and landed with great force against Pedro and Hank. As they fell to the floor, the Lone Ranger scooped up his guns. Hold it, all of you. He has his guns. See, he's too fast. Him and the Indians got us. I give up, mister. No. 
Magistus Pedro, give up! With a sudden move, Pedro hey. grabbed the outlaw near him, using him as a shield. Pedro, let me go, or they'll kill me. Let them. I shall back to the window, holding you in front of me. Don't shoot, mister. <laughs> so, he is holding his fire. Both him and the Indian, eh? Perhaps they are squeamish. That is good. The window is open and near the ground. Now I shall put a bullet in that masked man as I step back through the window. If you come back any closer, he may. Hey, what's the powder the... burns hey. from my six gun is liable to ruin your coat. Now drop that gun. Drop it. See, see, do not shoot, senor. I saw you at the window, Sheriff. Good work. Pedro, you dirty child. You would have let me take their bullets to save your own hide. This will show you. Go. If you hadn't done that, I would have. Got them under control now, Toto. Isn't that right? Hey, you sure had nerve facing that gang alone, my man. We saw the way you threw them around from outside the window. By facing them alone was quite unintentional, Sheriff. So I had to make the best of it. I don't figure that mask. Which side is he on, anyhow? How come he turned on them outlaws? Well, take it easy, men. I'll vouch for the fact that he's a friend of the law. Get these crooks and killers to jail. I'll color that he may hombre myself. All right. We bring horses to back a hotel, Kimisabi. Good enough, Toto. Everything seems to be taken care of now. <laughs> Sheriff, you'd better warn your deputies not to be fooled again by a sunbonnet and dress. <laughs> you can put this sunbonnet on Pedro and let him wear it in his cell to remind him. <laughs> Adios. Come on, Toto. Adios, <laughs> <laughs> My son, after what that masked man just went through, he still has his sense of humor. Huh? <laughs> All right, get up, Jimenez, and come along with me. I'll, uh, I'll carry your sunbonnet. <laughs> Caramba! <laughs> An hombre like the last one can afford to have a sense of humor. He is make fool of Pedro Jimenez. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> you ought to know better than to pick on the Lone Ranger. I will still wear... This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.